Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.1 RC2, or Release Candidate 2. This is the final version that they release early to developers and public beta testers, just to make sure everything's fine, and if they find additional issues, they release additional release candidates, and then release it to the public. So today we have RC2. And iOS 17.1 RC2 is only available for iPhone 15 models, so iPhone 15, 15 Plus, iPhone 15 Pro, and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Apple did not release it to any other devices for some reason. Also, Apple did not release any other updates, so there's no RC2 for Apple Watch or iPad or anything else, only the iPhone 15 series. And this particular update was not a huge update, but as you can see, it came in at 363.9 megabytes on my 15 Pro Max. It installed incredibly fast, so I don't know if with iOS 17.1, Apple updated something to make them install quicker, but it's very quick as far as installing the update and then rebooted and I was ready to go. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general here, then about, and on the right, as you can see, the new build number is 21B77. On my 14 Pro Max, since it doesn't have an update, we have version 21B74. We're actually a few versions newer, and that's a bit odd as when it releases to the public, they'll be off. So they'll probably update the older phones on the day of release to this one if there's no additional issues where they're testing it with the iPhone 15. That's not typically what Apple does, but if you're actually a beta tester and you're on an iPhone 15 device, you may wanna turn the betas back on if you haven't already, so you can install this version and then maybe turn it off afterwards and see if we have an update when this releases to the public sometime next week. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. Also, this update does not have a modem update for any, any of the iPhone 15 devices. There's no changes there. But as far as new features, updates, and changes, there's a couple things I wanted to mention that weren't mentioned in the initial What's New video, and then we'll talk about bug fixes as well. Now, as far as new features, well, if we go into shortcuts and maybe you're using a folder action, I actually have this set to the action button. So if I press and hold, you'll see we have eight shortcuts in total. Apple seemingly removed the show folder button, allowing up to eight total shortcuts. So that's something they've updated. With iOS 17.1 and HomePod OS 17.1 RC, Apple updated the HomePod mini and original HomePod to add the feature where you can edit the overall spoken dialogue. That way you can hear it a little bit better in your TV show or movie, where you can bring up the voice and edit it that way. Previously, that was only available on the HomePod second generation. So that's available on those devices. Now we know as far as features with iOS 17.1, we have new airdrop updates. So we have that as well as being able to transfer them over the internet. We also have standby updates. So we have some more options there to leave the display on all the time. We also have the new favorites playlist option within our music. So we can turn it to favorites or all playlists and then see more information when you're actually in a playlist, they suggest songs and more. I covered that in the initial what's new video. Now within the code, there doesn't seem to be any differences other than the version numbers. So there's no obvious changes here. Apple hasn't even updated their notes. However, there are a couple things worth mentioning. If we go in and maybe set a wallpaper, when you're setting a wallpaper, paper, it would typically blur the top of the wallpaper automatically on iOS 17.0.3. That's been resolved with 17.1. However, 17.1 RC2 may be a result of actually having to fix the overnight shut off bug or just where the phone would shut off on its own when you were using it. Some people would put it on the charger and then there would be a gap in their battery as to when it was shutting off completely. So that's something we're seeing. Hopefully they've fixed that. We don't know as it'll take a few days to know that for sure, but also the overall battery life has been odd. I reported this as a bug where it's using a ton of Safari for no reason. If we go to show activity, it only shows one minute of battery. So there's a bug there. I reported it in the feedback app. Hopefully they've fixed it with this. I haven't heard any feedback on it though, but that seems to be an odd issue. Also, this battery graph is completely off. So we'll talk about battery life now, but there's more to talk about as far as when to expect different things as well. But battery life has been okay for me, but these numbers are way off. It's showing 10 hours and seven minutes of screen active time, and I use 75% of my battery. It says I used Safari 38% of the time, which I definitely did not. I maybe used it for 30 seconds. And then you'll see today it's showing seven hours and 31 minutes of screen active time. I'm not sure how they've updated this and what's changed, but this seems to be completely wrong and not accurate. It shows impressive numbers now, but it doesn't seem to be accurate at all as far as how much I've used it. I've used the phone probably an hour today. 
and I've, I'm already down to 71% battery. So what I did before is I switched out Safari for Chrome. I disabled Safari in the settings using screen time, and that seemed to fix my battery quite a bit. So there's still a bug there. Maybe it resolved it with this. So we'll have to give it a day or so to see. Also, as far as the overall cycle count, let's go into our settings again and then go to about. You'll see my iPhone has 19 cycles since new. So this is my main device. We have 19 cycles. For some reason, they still haven't brought that to older phones as well. Apple actually updated the release notes this time around where they skipped it last time when they released iOS 17.1 RC. If we go into the feedback app, you'll see iOS 17.1 RC now with all of the things they've resolved. So there's a bunch of resolved issues for app intents, also for the camera where they've fixed an issue where repeatedly entering cinematic mode or switching between front facing and rear facing captures in cinematic mode on the iPhone 15 and 15 pro might cause the preview to freeze for a couple of seconds. Also, they've resolved some issues with power with the iPhone and Apple watch when they're paired with mismatched versions. They've also resolved some issues where remote widgets might render blank on mismatched iOS and Mac OS releases. They've left the one where they fixed an issue with SK ad network. StoreKit has some res resolved issues as well as Wallet and Apple Pay still have some known issues. But in general, they've fixed quite a few things along with that iPhone 12 issue in France. And it says updates the iPhone 12 for users in France to accommodate a test protocol for specific absorption rate or SAR testing. For more information, visit this website. So that's something we've talked about before. So they finally updated this. However, I would love to see more detail as far as actual bug fixes like they gave with the RC update. Just let us know what's in RC2. Hopefully Apple continues to give us more information about this. Also, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is the notification bug is still there. So there's still an issue there for sure. Definitely an odd issue, but maybe one day they'll actually fix it. As far as security updates, we should know more about this once it releases to the public. For some reason, Apple doesn't publish any security updates, even in the beta notes for some reason. They really should let us know what's in there, but maybe they have their reasons for that. But they definitely should let us know more information about what's in these specific updates. As far as when to expect the public release, well, I would expect it probably on Monday. That's when they typically release the updates, so October 23rd, or it could be the 24th. We know for a fact that it's coming out before then, before the 25th, due to French regulators posting that it's going to be released to fix that issue with RF radiation on the iPhone 12 series. So we know that's coming out for that reason. Hopefully we'll see that probably Monday, but it could be Tuesday as well. Also, as far as overall performance, it seems to be okay. I really noticed no difference whatsoever from using it just a moment ago before we were on RC2. Seems to be about the same. However, it could fix some additional overheat issues. The phone is nice and cool to the touch. I barely feel anything other than just the normal temperature of the metal and glass. Seems to be better there. But again, we just don't know if they've fixed anything there as they haven't said. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1 RC2, only if you're on the RC1 version would I probably install this. I'd wait until they actually release this on Monday or Tuesday to see what they're going to do. So at this point, if you're on iOS 17.1 betas or RC, definitely install it if you have an iPhone 15 device. If not, just hold off a few more days, see what Apple does, and see if they release it. Other than that, there's not much more to talk about other than benchmarks. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Now I ran Geekbench twice just to see what we'd get as it was a little bit lower than last time. So if we go back and take a look at the CPU history, I scored 2,913 for single core, 6,954 for multi-core. With RC1, it was a little bit lower for single core, but a little bit higher for multi-core. So these first two here are RC2. The one below it is RC1. So that gives you an idea of the overall change. So that's everything so far with iOS 17.1 RC2. I'm a bit surprised they released it only for the iPhone 15 models. But again, I would expect the build numbers to be evened out probably when it releases on Monday or Tuesday. Let me know if you've noticed any differences, any improvements or anything else. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.